Lonely Globe, all right. episode one, with Vessel. How's it going, Let's bro? Let's go. I'm doing all right, I'm doing all right. How are you doing, man? No, I'm good. How does it feel being the first one on the podcast, by the way? <laughs> Mad, because <laughs> I've never been like... <clears throat> no, bro, um... it's a weird one for me because... Let me have some more, because I'm... Throat. I've got a cold now, well, not got a cold, I've got a chest <laughs> infection as well, but... Yeah, yeah. It's a weird one for me, because I've never done a podcast in my life, so this mm-hmm. is the first time. And I bet it's even weirder for you, because you've never done an interview. Yeah, man, I, it kind of seems very natural, this, because, like, this, you're doing a, you're doing really well. I mean, it's just started, but, like, yeah, you no, seem good it, at it. Yeah, it's weird, like, how many people have come forward and wanting to, like, participate in Lonely Globe being a brand and all, and, you know, I've got, yeah. like... I've got uh, things in place that I want to do with it, you know, like I've got, I've been trying to do my music uh, and the, especially for the people out there uh, being like wanting to be a part of Lonely Globe to participate in something so like different and build their own because that is what Lonely Globe is about. Lonely Globe is like, I think when I spoke to you about the name before, uh, Lonely Globe was a, a brand that I created purely for the fact that there's people out there that stay and are alone within the uh the things they do so that mm-hmm. being music or being a designer or whatever like that you know like uh, me designing i've always been like my own in my own little space never really had people to like sit back with and design with so i've always mm-hmm. done it by myself um and i can imagine a lot of musicians have done that i don't know if that reflects to you at all but um, no i get it i get, I get exact, it you know what i mean like exactly that and it's a worldwide thing i want to create it like for yeah, yeah. everyone around the world who's an artist like musician whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and you want to kind of be the support that artists are looking for oh yeah 100 like, <laughs> man like no jumper back in the day was i yeah it was a build-up of people that were uh, on the on the way up like well suicide boys little peep yeah Ghost Man, all that X. Stuff. Uh, yeah 100 um, yeah, yeah i'm kind of referring it back a bit more than that though um mm-hmm. and like there's people out there like i've just literally started up with like 60 followers I don't have nothing to the name. I've probably got like two listeners. My recent song uh, did recently seven views on fucking spot. No. That's something. That's something to me, though. That's something to me. I mean, uh, people are listening. My newest song. Let me check real quick how yeah, much. It, man. Um, how much it got? Because <clears throat> it's not like it's not doing that well in my standards. But you know, it is what it is, really. Yeah, we all start um, somewhere, man. We all start somewhere. I mean, I've been doing this shit for how long now? Since twenty seventeen. Oh, twenty seventeen, man. Like how long so have we the fact been that I'm still, well? I can't <laughs> it could maybe like a year, yeah. maybe. But it feels like long, um, into me. It feels like longer, hundred percent. Yeah, like yeah. So this shit, like, it's on ninety-eight streams right now, and it's been like three, four days, and like it should have way more. Is that uh, like divest? Uh, but it just doesn't, huh? Divest. Yeah, yeah, divest. Uh, I I worked my ass off on that song to try and promote it and like make a music video and do everything I can for it, but like. I don't know. It it isn't really doing as high I want it to, but it could just be like my marketing not being that good. I think uh, or maybe one of those <clears throat> just has to be a takeoff, doesn't it? Like um, in general, um, music now everyone's doing it. Do you know what I mean? Um, we all jump on a grind, but do you know what? I'm, the most exciting thing about music at the minute is the genres that are coming out. There's so many different genres, and everyone's got different styles, and that's what one thing I love about your stuff, man. It, it's a diff- it's a different style all mm-hmm. the time and i love that i think that's what attracted I mean, me to your music more than anything mm-hmm. i mean i do think nowadays it's a bit harder to like be unique because everyone's doing so much different shit and like wh- wherever i look i feel like sometimes someone's already done it so i can't do it anymore yeah man um that's right by, by example in 2017 when i started music it was way easier to be unique because there weren't as many people doing what uh you know, like what Scar was doing or X was doing. Uh, uh, it was a very small community. Um, and, of course, it just grew more and more and more and it got more saturated and everyone started sounding the same and it was really hard to, like, differentiate yourself and, like, make yourself seem newer or different from everyone else. Uh, and I, I still struggle with that to this day where I, I tried to make my music different uh, and I want kind of my music to be more emotionally charged than a lot of the music nowadays because I do feel like music has become very stagnant and it's kind of went in full circle. Like it went from, you know, like mumble rap and talking about sex and drugs and saying the same word all over again to actually talking about your emotions with X blowing up and Lil Peep and there was actually lyrical con- context and like 
they were really like you know it, you can feel the emotion and now it's gone back to like the same shit of like horny sex and drugs and but it's like right. now this i mean the rapping is hard but it's like the low voice fucking like it just went full circle you know it's a new style but it's the same shit really <clears throat> it's, you're pretty much trying to say it's mm. people rapping about shit that doesn't exist in their life yeah yeah it, like, it, you know it, i mean i don't i don't get it like emote like i think everyone should i won't say everyone but everyone's got a different style and they want to rap about what they want to rap about or do songs on what they want to do songs about but you're right what you're saying like there's loads of people out there that it came out full of emotion when x was about like like when you're saying just about the different stars like um how scarbrook came through and like you got like x and then ba like bad lad bad lads on a different vibe as well like mm -hmm. um you look back at like the time Scar first started music. Um, mm -hmm. It's funny because I was watching an interview about this the other day. Like Scar, Scar originally was into dance, was into like dance yeah, yeah, dance, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like Warvo is what I call it because it's obviously near me. Like I'm not f literally when Scar was there, it was, like up in War Wolverhampton, it was just like just down the road from me. But he he went from doing dance to doing, and he's always done music to the mm -hmm. to doing like different genre in general within his music to then opening a completely different genre like not mm -hmm. everyone can do that and he, he stated in this interview right that if you can and i i'm a firm believer in this you know what I, I i gave him props to it because a lot of people a lot of people like a lot of people out there don't actually state the obvious but mm -hmm. he stated um that if you can master one thing in your lifetime you can master everything and in that is that is right and I, I take that into consideration with my graphics now like i i've not mastered my graphics i've done a lot of different things out there that people don't create uh and i try and be a bit different within the style i do and the creativity i, I do and there's people out there way better than me but if I, I feel like if i can get good at that i can get good at music and if i can get good at that i can be good at football if i can be good at football i can be good at video editing do you know what i mean he, he, mm -hmm. there's a there's a there's a flow to it and then like i liked how he stated that because it's not everyone not everyone can do that and i think and that's what um, I, I know i said this to you on call not so long ago like you were saying about how um how you feel you could be better <laughs> and there's people mm -hmm. doing better than you and i said to you like you don't need to worry about that stuff man because going back to style like your style is people are going to be doing like a similar style but only you can make yourself different do you know what i mean mm -hmm. only you can do that yeah yeah i mean you know it's just a case of if you want it really bad you know <clears throat> yeah be chaser man <clears throat> you really have to kind of like put your mind to shit and really <laughs> Man, I'm ill. I'm sorry. Nah, it's good for man. I think, I think we're all dying at me. Like I said, I got a chest infection. You're yeah. fucking dying. Now. It's time of year. Yeah, man. yeah. So, like, again, it's just a case of, like, if you put your mind to it and you really want it, you know, you're going to have to put that work in and just, you know, get it. Uh, you have to put yourself in situations where you're actually, you know, uh, gaining and shit like that. And you have to be clever about that shit because, um, I don't know, the more... Cause I'm I'm doing a lot of things, but it's just not working. And I have to, I realize that you have to kind of be smart when it comes to like um, promo. It's networking, man. It's just like talking to people. You have to kind of make relationships with people and friendships and all that shit. And me being an, intro an introvert, like I fucking hate people. I don't like being around yeah, people. Yeah. Uh, I've never never enjoyed it. It's very awkward for me. And uh, I'm, I'm a very sensitive person. So, you know, it, it gets really tough for me to be around a lot of people because a lot of people are insensitive. Yeah, um, 100%. Yeah. Um, uh, so it gets, it, it's tough to network. <laughs> it's yeah, tough so to, like, I, push I myself. I am a people person. That is me. I am, I yeah. am a people person. Like, I admit to that. But then mm -hmm. I find it hard to conversate, uh, have conversations with people that I don't um, kind of, like, vibe to. If I don't catch that vibe from them, that I feel like... I'm getting within that one minute conversation. Like I, I close up. I like my barriers come up, but like you, like straight when we started talking, it was like instant money. It? it was like, and that's what I mean. It feels like we've known each other for a long time. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm I mean, I think, I think I've just kind of got that vibe because like a lot of the people that I talk to, they always just tell me about how whenever they talk to me, they they feel like they've known me for a while. Yeah. I, I make them kind of feel very included and. 
I don't know. I don't, I don't really don't like leaving people out. I don't know if you've noticed, but whenever like we're in group chats or anything, I always talk to everyone. Yeah, I don't talk to just one person. I never leave people out. Uh, uh, when someone's not talking, I'll talk to them and te uh, like text them if they're good or you know, or I try to involve them in the conversation and try to like really help out. Um, because I, I again, I, I really believe in like helping people and just like being there for people and being nice when you have like being nice unconditionally, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's one thing that is I have noticed about you, to be fair. Because I must say this right now, in this scene, there are a lot of people that are just like pricks. Bro. Like, I, I think that... Honestly, there, there are man. so many there are so many people that are like mean like they'll preach about positivity and like really good shit but once you get to talk to them bro they're just like complete dickheads to you the entire time bro i've had dms like i've gone out of my way to dm people now for, for mm. like on on behalf of lonely globe and I've, I've gone out there to understanding and trying to get an understanding beyond different artists that is the thing with the brand like oh, i want to bring as many genres in as possible so i've gone out to speak to people right just to understand, get explained and put my point across of what I am trying to achieve with this brand. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. not so much just me achieve, I think it's achieving for everyone else. Um, mm -hmm. But mate, the, 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 literally the amount of people that just are, are, are honest about, mm -hmm. about it, but like, say for instance, uh, the other day, like I, I can't, like I was having a conversation with an artist, and I, I said, like, oh, this is what it's going to be, and this is what it, this is what it is, and this is what I plan to do. And like, people are honest about it, and you know what, everyone's got a different opinion, but it's like pure, the pure state of what the person said was, this isn't going to work. This is pure shit. It sounds like a bunch of bollocks. Like just remove the conversation. I was just like, all right, your one. You're that artist, or though you're that person within the music industry that no one will kind of gather to. And you're you're that ignorant fucker, basically. Yeah, nah, bro. It's it's annoying to meet people that are very ignorant and very like not emotionally intelligent. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Because like, uh, like by example, there have been moments where by example, uh, where um, like I've had low parts of my life, uh, and I feel really fucked, and I'd go on my way to talk to people and like tried to get some help from friends or something like that and i've had them turn around and just kind of like had someone call me later on like later that night and tell me oh yeah they were like talking shit and really glad that you left because they felt like you depressed them or mm -hmm. they were like oh there's a time and space which in my opinion like i i completely understand there's a time and space right but if if someone joined my server or my discord chat and they were really suicidal and they were freaking the fuck out right and i was busy i would tell them dm me don't i'm busy right now i'm i'm playing a game or i'm talking to my friends but i will tell i will get to you when i have the time just wait please i wouldn't tell i wouldn't say oh yes you bring the fucking mood down and yeah, start insulting man. them it's not the right thing to do i try to be there for them i will tell them dm me later and i'll try my best to reply as soon as i can and try to tell you uh what i what my opinion or you know the support that uh i think you should get because again, sometimes I just can't help, and then I have to tell them, "Yo, just get therapy, bro." <laughs> no. no, that's right, man. Um, and that's one thing I want to say. Actually, big up um, Fessel on that because if anyone's looking for a Discord server to actually put themselves forward and um, you know come clear with uh, things that people find it hard to like actually speak to people they know, uh, I, I, I'm like one. I'm that person. You know, I, I find it easy to speak to people I hardly know than that I do people that I do know. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, um, big up on your server on that. So if anyone does need a link, there will be a link for a uh, Vessel server to join on that. Um, and it's not just I mean, the whole. I'm not talking about the whole men like people have got to come forward and start giving Vessel of mental health <laughs> lectures. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a cool chat. It is a cool chat. Not everyone's it, talking about wanting to die and stuff. But uh, the the entire <coughs> chat is just like, of course we're trolling around. Sometimes there would be like moments yeah, where yeah. you'll try to be serious and we're trolling, but there are <laughs> yeah. times where we're uh, in the VC and it's a late night and we're just talking about a lot of deep shit and just being there for each other and like trying to you know talk about how certain things affect us and how things made us feel because again you know life isn't as clear cut you know yeah. uh, like uh, everyone has um uh, a very unique and yeah a unique life an intense life like uh, you have to kind of sit there and think bro the random person that you see on the street that you never heard anything from before has just as a like a 
intense life is yours you know mm, that yeah. they've went through so much shit too i yeah, mean they might have they might have not yeah everyone everyone's kind of gone through shit you know no that's right um uh i mean uh, i do think uh, that you know when you're suffering um that you know how do i explain this like when when you feel fucked you shouldn't play it down by saying oh people have had it worse than me or there are pe people that have it like when you're feeling shit you feel shit and your emotions affect you the same like differently to how uh, everyone else you know you could have a small situation happen in your life right that is small for you but it could happen to someone else and it'd be extremely detrimental and fuck with their head and yet you know something that's big to you could happen to them yeah, yeah. and they could not give a flying fuck about it you know That's right, it's man. just how shit works um it's 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 common sense really uh, have you noticed um, about how many people have started to actually come forward with a lot of their music and open up though now like it's it's deep man but it's good because you wonder it, some people find it hard to talk to people so a lot of people put um a sense of um emotion and feelings into their lyrics that they wouldn't put out in person um would you say you do that same or i mean i uh, my music is about being real i like yeah, yeah. i uh so uh, my my shit most of it sometimes i'm like i'm just waffling bro i'm just talking shit because i've i'm i want to make hype music yeah yeah, yeah. you want to get people to get hot the fuck up do you know what i mean like uh, I but then, pit music, but I'll, I'll yeah 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 but then there are like once you look deep into the lyrics you know a lot of people think my lyrics are a bit like basic and you know very vague but when you look into that shit i, I feel like you would understand like some of the shit that i talk about in this real uh i think that's a lot like an issue a lot of my friends tell me about that like sometimes i'm just constantly stuck trying to be way too real and way too like emotional about a lot of shit like i i like I, I look into shit i'm very observant about a lot of things uh i'm very I'm very aware all the time you know yeah man. and uh when you live in a world where people don't want to be aware they just want to kind of be like uh they want to be they want to enjoy the feelings like they want to they want to feel happy they want to feel like they want to feel pleasure you know that's yeah, all yeah, people yeah. care about nowadays um and if they don't feel that serotonin that pleasure um kind of that dopamine in their brain you know that they're, they're, they're not they're not going to be happy they're not they're not going to listen to you they're not going to care um and me i kind of try my best to uh really remove myself from my urges and like i i try my best to not have my uh have like have this control like when other people will have this urge to you know feed into something i don't allow myself to do that there's like this voice in my brain that just goes no don't give into anything you know you're you that's what makes you you that you never give into anything you don't smoke you don't drink you don't do drugs you know you don't fuck with people you don't go clubbing you just mind your own business yeah, you, you do your work you, you go to the gym you put your head yeah you put your head down and that's what you know that's what you got to do rider, man. if you were um, uh, if you were in a uh in an mc you'd be like nomad wouldn't you <laughs> yeah, you'd be like the nomad guy um let's go back then bro come on let's let's, mm -hmm. let's go back a bit this how did it start this like how 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 did vessel come about like what made what made a clearance in your life to say I wanted to do music. I wanted to start really because you started on SoundCloud. I'm guessing you started on SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah. I started on SoundCloud in 2017. Um, the best way uh, to explain is my little brother. Uh, he used to. He was the one that rapped. Well, no, my older brother rapped first. What was he his used name? to be like a rapper. Oh, his name was like Fenny Fresh or some shit like that. Nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's all like it was like Eminem type shit, bro. Yeah. Like it was like this boom bap rap. It's German. Hey. Uh, hey. Bro, eight, like mile, that. eight mile chain pe uh, changed people. It's a, yeah, it's yeah. a sick film. It, it's, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, but like uh, when I was a kid, I used to get like I used to have this dream in my head to kind of like make music with my older brother. Uh, and like he, he would inspire me to just, you know, like express myself creatively. Uh, and I, I just had like this constant like I think this is a bit of like deep shit but like i i had this constant urge to be like my brother yeah. when i was younger so when i heard him make music and shit like that it was just you know normal for me to go i want to do that too i want to do that too um 
And then later on in life, during 2017, I remember I was sitting in my little brother's, like in my little brother's house uh, at my dad's, basically. Yeah. And I was sitting on the sofa and my brother just like went up to me, and said, yo, because uh, at the time I used to listen to a lot of metal, like uh, emo rock shit, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and I used to listen to a lot of like future designer, 21 Savage, like rap that's shit where, that's where uh even that even stormzy and like uh fucking thingy uh and just like british rap shit it's like drill metal's a thing now do you know what i mean like yeah yeah crazy, yeah it? i mean i wasn't really intense into all of those i was like talk i was listening to a lot of like the like the top layer of artists yeah but then my brother just went yo you you gotta check out x and i was like why and he showed me x's song he's like yeah you love that scream shit don't you and i was like yeah that shit goes hard yeah. like i fuck with this I went home and I couldn't stop listening to the song, and like I I I found myself in this constant like like wanting to take in more and more and more of this music that X had, uh, and it I don't know that feeling that that his music had at the time, it it really meant a lot to me. It it kind of inspired me heavily. I was like shit, I really want to do this. So my my younger brother he came to my house because I had a whole setup, I had microphones and shit like that. Uh, and he was like, yo, I've written some lyrics for you. Do you want to read them? Like, do you want to rap? I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I was really nervous at the time. Like, I, I sit here and I scream into the fucking microphone without giving a shit anymore. But back then, I couldn't even talk into the microphone. I've noticed I've been starting without to being... do that now. Like, yeah. I, I kind of like, oh, someone be on the door listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just think, ah, it's got to be done. It's got to be done. You see, now, I don't care about that anymore. But back then, I was very aware of that shit. And I would, you know... Uh, he would basically teach me like how to. He would. He would. He was my ghostwriter for a while. My little brother. Yeah. Um. Uh. I, that was a really good part of my life where me and my little brother we were like a duo when it came to rapping. Uh. And it, we were in high school. We were known would to it like. Would be anything? Would he? Would he write specifically about anything or just? Um. Bro, it was it was dumb shit. Again, we we made like music talking about random ass shit, yeah. like fucking bitches doing drugs. Even yeah. though I did none of that shit, you know. Like you look back, Young Lean did the same. Like sat in yeah, yeah. with all his friends, sad boys, and just fucking just wrote shit. They didn't care what. And look at his songs; they blew up and stuff like that. But then again, everyone's got to do what they got to do, and it, it, it's so, a vibe at the end of the day. So over time, you know, uh, I I decided fuck it. I'm gonna like. I'm gonna write my own music, and I remember my first ever song that I ever dropped, dropped that I wrote by myself, was called DMC One, and it was a dog shit. Like the mi the mixing was ass. Uh, I thought it was the craziest shit ever, but it was a distorted XXX Tentacion type beat. You know, it was a base. It's the most basic trap metal shit. You know, <laughs> and I released that like what mid 2017. Um. Around the time X got released, I think. I don't know when X got released. I don't remember. Yeah, it's um, um, it's going back a while. X, X started, I think he, uh, did he take down some of his stuff that he did a while back? And then I don't he, know. I think he just did like a refresh. I'm not too sure. I might be, I might be gassing on that. I don't know, but <clears> obviously I, Heart Attack was his biggest, but. No, Heart Attack is Scar Lord. X oh, was oh, uh, thing. Yeah, do you know what? I'm getting it so mixed up. X, uh, <laughs> X did start some of his stuff. Uh, X's think, look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. X, I, I think X did release some stuff and then it got taken down because I've still got on my YouTube old X songs that he doesn't have anymore. Uh, and so mm -hmm. they've done a re upload. I'm going to try and get a hold of them because they were sick. Um, mm -hmm. I think Scarlet did the same. I don't know. Yeah, but X, yeah, no, X did the same. X definitely did it. I'm sure he did because I've, I've got some on my, um, on my old YouTube and it's like someone re uploaded them and they, they are hard. Like, I. I think now, like that, that was good. Uh, I don't know why he took him down because there was, like I said, they went hard, bro. Yeah, uh, I think like over time uh, of making more music, I just got into the community a bit more, and I would talk to different artists. Uh, and um, I think in twenty twenty, uh, in twenty twenty, actually no, in twenty eighteen is when I had like a like a bit of a breakthrough. Yeah. Where one of my songs kind of blew up, not blew up, but you know, it got like 20k, 30k. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, but then I had to dip from music because I had to move countries. I went back to Germany because I tried to move back, but it didn't really work well. So I came back and I started to make music again. Ah, but then, okay. but then my my music died, and I wasn't called Vessel at the time. I was called Rise. Um, I remember you putting that in the uh, Discord the other day. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now I that, but then when I moved back here, I changed my name to Vessel. Yeah. That was my old producer name, but now I just permanently went to that. Was that just a, um, something you chose because it was a cool name, or uh, the name like it? It kind of like means because uh, uh, I feel empty. I feel yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not even just empty. I feel like a like like I, I'm just here, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean me, like I I feel like I didn't mean anything to anyone. Like I felt like uh, I was very replaceable, you know. Uh, just like an empty vessel. Yeah. Um, with nothing special about me. It was very basic. Um, it there's, like there's, 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 there's always something behind the name. Like I mean, like everyone asks why my nickname is the way it is because mine's Mashy, obviously. So yeah, yeah. And that that is purely because like I was younger, my brother couldn't say Matthew, he say Mashu. So mm -hmm. like Mashy stuck, and like everyone calls me Mashy. My mom, like the whole family, call me Mashy. I, I even went to school and you get the odd one or two teachers call me Mashy. I think there's one guy at work he just call, he calls me Mashy. The everyone calls me Matt, mm -hmm. but I just get used to Matt. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah. I, like I don't like when people call me Matt. Really, like Mashy's the one. But... Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't like my real name. I don't identify with it really yeah. well. But I'm used to my name, so I don't want to change it. Yeah. But yeah, I think Vessel just sat with me right because, uh, yeah, I just most of my life I've always felt like a like a very replaceable person. Like I'm not that special. I've never felt special. I've never felt uh, like like and anyone really needed me in their life. You know. Is that what um, do you think? Is that probably why you started music? Do you think? Do you think that was to give you a bit of a a purpose? You know, because like an accomplishment. Because like you said, you hit what twenty to thirty k on one one track, and you, I bet that well, was good. Like, like let me let me tell you this, right? You know how a lot of people they're like, oh, people that are depressed, uh, they 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 want to die because they don't feel loved. Mm. For me, it's I don't really want to be loved. I just I had a I, I had no purpose. You just wanted to feel real. Anyway, I, I wanted I no it's I wanted to feel like I I had a point to be here you know okay yeah yeah, yeah. um like I I because I'm a, like I think it's I think it's something to do with masculinity or being a man right where it's like you kind of you want to have something to put your brain to whether it's a person whether it's music whether it's the gym I had nothing at the time yeah you know um I I had I had nothing to think about at the time and it was fuck it was fucking my head um. Uh, like I'm having a tough time explaining it. Um, it is one of those where you've, it, it is hard to explain. Uh, I how I think. It, sorry, go ahead. You no, know, go on. What was you gonna say? It it's a case of like um, instead of like me wanting to feel loved, I just wanted to feel like I was fulfilling a purpose. Yeah. Uh, I was working. For, for something or doing something with myself you know um and i didn't care if it was you know loving someone i didn't care if it was making music i, I just wanted to do, commit to a purpose and of course i've got my purpose now yeah uh, and I, I i've learned that life is not only about purpose but it is about being loved and cared for and like Mate, it's about having relationships fun as well like it's about having fun you gotta have much fun. Like, like bro i'm not not gonna lie like, <laughs> like i'm a bit older than you so Mm -hmm. I'm not much older, but like it only felt like last year I was 16, man. Honestly, yeah, yeah. I, I had the best time being 16. I'm now 26, coming 27. Mm -hmm. Like, if time flies, man. You got to have fun. I've really noticed I mean, that. With with being with having fun, I was very like because con I'm again very conscious of yeah, consequences. Yeah. So I I get really scared that I'm gonna do something wrong or hurt someone. I I I I have a very good understanding of how my actions could affect someone. Mm. Um. And kind of that's like why feeling like you're gonna mess, like you feel like you're gonna mess up. Type of uh, it's a feeling that I'm gonna mess up, or I'm gonna own. Like a lot of people have went through really fucked shit in their life, man. Like a lot of people have went through loads of fucked shit. I don't want to be another thing to be added on top of that for them. I want to be something yeah. good for people, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's why I make the music I make. I want to be a thing that people look at and go, "Yo, this shit is helping me. This is a positive, like." This is gonna like sway from being horrible to good. Like I want to be that little extra push for people to go the right way, you know. Uh, I think that's uh, specifically what X did and Lil Peep and uh, like Juice World and they all did the same. And it, it is mm -hmm. it really is life changing. Um, what's his name now? Um, oh God, what was the guy's name? 
can't remember the rapper's name now. He did. He's recently done. He's done stuff with Logic and stuff like. I think it's named jo, um, Jonah something. Uh, what was his name? He did. He he did the music. Jonah Lucas. Jonah. Yeah, Jonah Lucas. Nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. he. I think he so. Specifically, like, he made his music videos. He made. Um, he did the one on mental health where a friend committed suicide and how much he hated him for it but at the same time he wanted to put an understanding how how um how important life is no matter how dark and bad it can get like life's important no matter what and do you know what my my um, family have always like said that to me like and my mum specifically has always said like no matter how much life can get hard like it's 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 important let me let me give you a new perspective on some shit right yeah. And this is like when someone always like comes to me for support or asks me for help, right? Um I don't give them like the same generic bullshit of like, oh, what would your family think? Or like what about the people that love you? You know? Like, cause it's not about them. Like you're the one that's suffering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to help them, I'm trying to help you. So I wanna know what's going on with you. I wanna know how I can help you, you know, how I can support you. What do you feel right now? You know, if you don't feel like you're important, then I, uh, you know, uh, or you, you're dealing with a lo- loads of things that are on your mind that you just need to get out of your brain and you just need to, te- like, I, I say this and I know X did this and I will do it. Like, I, my DMs are open. People can use it as a journal. They can text whatever they want. They can text their problems. Uh, I will reply sometimes. I might not reply sometimes. And, you know, I will do my best. But like genuinely, I want to be there for people and help them and to try to, you know, give them actual yeah. good support, uh, lead them the right way. And I do understand I'm not a therapist, so I can't really help them with everything. Uh, if I can't help them, I would just tell them, hey, I think it's the best that you do get some support from mental health, you know, like mental health professionals and shit like that. But like, I, I understand what it feels like to suffer, man. Uh, I understand what it feels like to like at, like, at the end of the day, when you're laying in your bed, right? The only person that's in your head is you. No yeah. one's gonna know how you feel. Your mind is your worst of the... enemy, man. It's, honestly, it's your worst enemy. So, well, bro, but it the, can be your it, best friend the, at the same time. Yeah, the only person that is in there is you. The only person that suffers with this piece of shit right here is you. You know, and no one's gonna be able to get like understand uh, what's going on in there. That yeah. no one can get, enter your brain for you. You know. Uh, and the best, uh, the best you can do to support someone that is like that feels extremely alone, is to just kind of, I don't know, just be understanding of their feelings and be very what's it called considerate. Because um, I do realize that a lot of people nowadays are not considerate at all, man. The only thing they like thinking about is themselves. Yeah, man. That's uh, right. It, it's, sometimes it's, really... it's okay i guess to think about yourself like i think no I mean, it is, but what i get what you're trying to say like you're trying to say people that just care about themselves in a way they don't give a fuck about others um, mm-hmm. i do think you have to care because at the end of the day you want to improve you have to care about yourself yeah, yeah, you yeah, have 100%. like i i've recently worked my ass off to go to the gym and i've kind of clocked something in my head where no matter how i feel i got shit to do i need i need to do what i need to do you know, I've found my purpose and my purpose is to other people that don't feel like they have that fucking backbone to give them that extra pride that they're looking for. You know, when they listen to my music or they look at my interviews or they listen to what I say, I want them to take in what I say and kind of go, oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Now nah, I've never really thought about it that way. And like they actually like implement it into themselves because I'll tell you right now, like pride is such an important like emotion, like a lot of people love to hate on it because it turns people selfish. But like my view on pride is a bit different. Of course, there's like a dictionary, um, you know, explanation of it. But for me, I, I've realized that pride has always kept me safe and made me make the right decisions. Yeah. At the end of the day, I always think to myself, what would I do? You know, what would I do? Not what would he do? What would fucking that person do? What would my parents do? What would they want? No, none of that. I would always go into my own mind and go, what the fuck would I do? You know, and that's pride that brings me there because I know, like, I have pride within my decisions and what I do. Um, this is the thing, and like, I I say, you don't, you as a person, and do you know what? Tell me if I'm wrong, you don't realize how much, how strong you are, like, Mm -hmm. because, like, we've had conversations, right? 
how like you do that. Everyone doubts themselves. Don't get me wrong. But this is mm-hmm. this is this is the point I'm trying to cross to you. Like when I tell you, like oh, don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. You've got this. You've got that. Um, this can work. This can't work. This you deep down you know like what you've got to do. Mm-hmm. And I think you kind of you're not the, you're the same as me, man. Like sometimes you just have to have that kind of guidance, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah. you needed another voice to like kind of like agree with you or disagree with you in a way. Because yeah, I, yeah. I, I am that person as well. Like cause I've noticed that like I I can be strong when I need to be strong, but then there's times I kind of like coward out of things, and I kind of mm-hmm. need that extra voice or that extra person's input to go. No, it's okay. Like they kind of just they kind of just like tell you to like like how do i explain this to kind of validate to kind of yeah, go like yeah. okay you're doing the right thing like you're on the right path you know yeah just do, keep doing what you're doing do you remember when you was at school and you had like that say for instance you had an equation right and you know you kind of know it's right but then mm-hmm. you kind of needed that you didn't put your hands up yeah but so like, you waited for the answer yeah yeah and then it was like oh you asked that person you go to the say you go to the teacher or the ta or whatever and you go oh i've done it do you, is that right and they go yeah it's right you kind of need to believe in yourself more that that is exactly what it it's is. exactly that i agree with that fully um I, I think i think like again me personally i'm a person that lives with a lot of doubt and like i don't believe in myself that much uh because uh in most of my life i've been like what's it called i don't want to say neglected but like I, yeah there's push, no, push there's no the only way you've been pushed to the side and stuff like yeah that. i've yeah. always been pushed to the side and like no one's really sat there and thought like how would this make him feel no one gave a fuck no one ever really genuinely went how is this gonna affect him because they were all too busy worrying about themselves um which you know is not wrong at the end of the day because you know you only have one life and you have to really think about yourself but it's not wrong to be considerate and uh, considerate of someone else's emotions i've spent all my life you know, being there for people and considerate uh, of their emotions and making sure I don't hurt anyone and I, I I don't fuck with people's emotions. Whenever I've flirted with people, I've always told told them my intentions start like from the beginning, so they don't feel like they're being led on or you know, or maybe I just cut it off completely and tell them, hey, I'm not feeling like I I I'm not interested in you like that. I'm not gonna fuck with them like that. I don't do that shit. You know, I I I genuinely try to. Like, be honest, open about my emotions and talk about shit. Because that's the only thing you can do to be considerate, you know? To 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 be... Uh, that's the right thing to do. To be honest and considerate. And a lot of people don't do that. They just... They go, okay, I'm gonna... I'm just gonna... What's the word? Um, I'm just gonna think what you want and run with it. Like, I'm gonna think, yeah. oh, you might be mad... So I'm just going to not talk to you about it because he might get mad. Instead of giving me the respect of making the decision of getting mad or not, you know? You've just kind of given me that decision. You've put words into my mouth. You've put thoughts into my brain, you know? Not thoughts, but well, you took you took thoughts out of nothing, you know? And put it into my mouth. Like, no, you don't do that. Mm. You, you actually should hear what I have to say instead of running off and... Uh, kind of like guessing what I'm saying and then thinking that's right. Because you don't know what I said. You didn't hear my opinion. You don't know how I feel. People always just run off and kind of... um, They like to like... already think they know about how I feel. I don't know what the word is. I reckon a lot of people are going to be listening to this podcast and like even up-and-coming artists that have just started and they'll take notes on this. Because it is right what you're saying. Like a lot of people are going to feel the same, and a lot of people do feel the same. And and I know for a fact, oh, and I hope to God, there's people out, uh, the people that do listen to this, uh, especially from an up and coming artist, you kind of see sense into what you say because you are a perfect example of an artist that is just trying to make his way, doesn't give a fuck about the da- uh, the wrong or the right. There's doubts like anyone, but you have an understanding of I've got one goal and one goal only and no matter who gets in my way they ain't gonna stop me and yeah again my goal is to help people man my goal is to like because I bro when I get those messages from people that tell me like you you've been there for me your music has saved me your music's helped me you know that shit like that shit touches me man from a small artist Uh like yourself mate like a small artist like yourself is it's that a lot of people don't get that 
Mm-hmm. And my fans are not only my fans, bro. They're my family. Oh yeah, man. yeah. They're like, they're yeah. A, yeah, they're like a cult, bro. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. I hold them close you, and dear to me. What would you call it? Oh, bro. I don't know. I don't, I don't have a name. Like a lot of people just call it the vessel cult, but I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> uh, I I don't know what to call it. Uh, all I do know is that the people that do listen to my music and uh, do talk to me, um, they talk to me like friends, man. I treat them just like I would treat anyone else. Yeah, man. Everyone, everyone, everyone's deserving of like, you know, good treatment, uh, like good human decency, you know. Yeah. Um. What's the plans for, obviously, any of your listeners um, that do listen to a lot of your songs, and I'm, I hope you get uh, a lot of other uh, listeners from this and a lot of fans. But, uh, what's the plans? Um, give them a bit of input. Is is there anything in the works that you want to let uh, let let out? Shall I say, or is it all going to be? under the carpet just for now uh nah bro i've got like five songs i've got so much music to release there's so much shit like I'll, I'll say this right now my brain's been in a really bad spot and i i had a moment where i was genuinely sitting there like should i just like drop like not drop but like make 50 to 60 songs keep it in a vault and just like kill myself in a year <laughs> uh because my brain was just I, i've been yeah. really fucked in the head um but then I was like, nah, I can't do that. Uh, so now I'm like, okay, I'm just, I have currently like four to five songs that I want to release over the next couple of months, um, which are like, I, it's free for all, fucked up. Um, free for all is going to go hard because I've already listened to free for all. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to put that out there straight away. Free for all is, is a banger. Free for all, like the, the entire meaning behind free for all is the fact that in the world, like everyone's fending for themselves, you know? Yeah. Uh, so you have to kind of keep, you know, tough, you know, you have to kind of have to like, like, I don't like telling people like, oh, like, okay, it is okay to cry. It's okay to feel Your music and shit like is that. being a lone soldier, man. Just, yeah. But like sometimes that. you do have to fucking man up, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have to, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like there are times where you have to fucking like tell yourself like, grow the fuck up, man. No, that's you know? right, man. Um, that's right. It's just with, like growing up, you know, like because I grew up in like a like a how do I explain this? Um, uh, like my mom is German, my dad's Pakistani, so I've had like a you know the white European <laughs> fucking uh, uh, mixture. Gr- yeah, gr- uh, like I've been brought up by the white European side and the Asian side too, <laughs> so I've kind of had both sides, you know. Um, uh, but like from my experience, I've had like both extremes. Like uh, I'm, I'm willing to get into this because I, I want to hopefully, uh, like, if people hear about my story and how shit affected me and how I overcame it, it might help them yeah, yeah, overcome what they're going through if they've went through something similar. Like I've went through shit where, from my mother's side, I felt really neglected, and my mom would ignore me for, you know, um, her husband, which of course he's fucking gone now. Um, uh, like I, I felt really ignored as a kid and then from my dad's side he was like hyper controlling and wouldn't let me do shit like I, I wasn't even allowed to like do anything like I wasn't allowed to leave the house by myself I wasn't allowed to go to into a room by myself I had to be you, around you my dad constantly being a ticking time bomb then yeah yeah um so literally like because I had like the worst of both worlds you might think that it would like mediate each other like it would make like, make a middle ground fuck no it's just having the worst of both worlds and it makes it bad because yeah. there are times where in my life I felt like shit I wanna like I, I hate being cradled I hate when people try to like little bro me constantly and like cradle me through shit and make me seem like I'm naive or don't know what the fuck I'm talking about um uh, uh, and I don't like when people like constantly like, okay, I do accept people's help. I do understand when I need to shut the fuck up and accept help. Like, this is one thing that you people need to understand. Being alone and doing shit by yourself and hustling is fine, but you have to fucking realize when to get help. You know, when shit is getting too hard, when to accept help from your friends, people that are close to you, your family. You have to understand it's okay to get support, you know? It's it's okay to have people there for you and to support you through what you're doing. You don't. You, I I understand the entire I need to do this alone mindset, but like, at the end of the day, you're the one making the decision to get help. That's on you. Yeah. You know, that you are the one making decisions at the end of the day. 
of course, it might not seem like you're uh, you haven't done it alone. And you know, you can say uh, you haven't done it alone and the support with all your friends. But at the end of the day, you're the one that's making decisions. You know, it is you that is doing it all. Um, but I forget the original point I was saying. I went on a tangent there. <laughs> um, like your music though, your music just goes from like it explodes. Uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like. It's it's class. That's what I like about music. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I bro, I forgot what I what was I even talking about before. Like the like the entire like um. He's, uh, he's, he's help. talking about like how being on one side of the ro- uh, one side of the ropes with like your mom and your uh, uh, yeah yeah yeah, and then you got your so like, side which is more controlling. Yeah, yeah. Um, he saying he was kind of like in the kind of like a firing line. Grow- growing up and like seeing like bro I-, I had to see shit that i didn't need to see as a kid you know um I, you know and i you kind of have to live with that shit now in your brain uh yeah. and it, it like seeing a lot of violence when you're younger uh i, I don't really like saying that i was abused because again it's the kind of mindset of like there are people who have genuinely been abused you know and i don't mental uh mindset of abuse would you say because yeah i no, i no, i shit was bad bro i I will say shit i I won't i don't want to sugarcoat it but i don't want to i don't want to like seem like i'm trying to make my life worse than it is uh, it was so i i do know that a lot of people have it worse than me out there um but like i i have went through my uh good fair not good but bad fair share of like like bad shit you know that really fucked with my head um and affected me really bad uh i i saw fights and you know relationships break down in an instant like i I, i've never had like a like a like a what's it called what's the word like a consistent figure in my life Hmm. uh that that has like on this like that's kind of thought about me yeah like and people just kind of come and go i mean that's normal but like when it's your own family because that, like, your family are supposed, like, they're supposed to be consistent. Find, it's your fucking family. I find that with um, growing up, though, because when you're a, when you're a child, you, you have only, you've only got your family to go to because you're a child. I yeah, but when you don't have your family, when you don't have your family, but as you're a child, I can't yeah. imagine what it's like to be that lonely. Um, like, but how I, do I explain it? I find it gets go. easy as you get older because obviously friends become family. Like, I've got friends mm-hmm. in my class; they are family. Um, mm-hmm. and like though these things do get brought up throughout your life your life is like a big test like so there's things that get brought up in your life i've had it you've had it people definitely other people have definitely had it um but as bad as it is i kind of it molds you as a person because i am not the same person i was two years ago you i can imagine you're not the same person you were two or three years ago and i think it makes your it, it it do you know what it's like it's like you imagine someone that works in construction constantly getting their hands dirty your hands get mm-hmm. rougher your hands get stronger you go into the gym you pull you know, you pull more weight the stronger you get like do you know what I mean it is like a, yeah, yeah. it's like a clarification of um I mean, what I'm trying to say is like your head takes it more and then when you get over shit it like throws you into a, another deep end in life and then you kind of get over that one. Uh, mm-hmm. obviously, it, it's like just training, bro. It's, but... it's your brain working out. Yeah, it? yeah. It's your brain constantly um, going like, "Yo, hit this." I do. This. I do think that there are certain things that, like, your brain will take need to take time with, like healing from. Because, like, me, by example, um, not having a consistent like family member uh, in my life causes me to kind of like have to like deal with shit. Because I didn't have a consistent family member I could go to. I have a tendency to, like, overshare to a lot of random-ass people. Because mm. I didn't have my... Like, if I had my brothers, I would have just talked to them. Yeah, yeah. You know? But since I didn't have that, because they were all, like, in different countries or gone, or, like, I didn't have my family around, because they were all separated, and it was really hard. And my mom, if I tried to talk to my mom, she would just blow it off and not care. Um, uh, I... Uh, I had a tendency to overshare to a lot of people when I was younger. I still do now sometimes, you know, where I, I will just say way too much shit to people that they don't need to know. 
and I keep I keep talking about a random shit that people don't need to know. Yeah, some people um, like, sometimes it's just like a, it's a way of getting out, getting it out though. Because you have to get it out. Like if not, it mm -hmm. just builds up inside and just feels worse. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm but like, I mean. um, you know, when when you grow up not having like a like a good person to just like hold close and kind of tell everything to, you 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 explode. You just kind of explode and start telling everyone shit, and you it just causes like a lot of stress because a lot you'll start thinking, oh shit, people will know everything about me, and I'm gonna get judged now, and I'm a weirdo, and I fucking hate myself, and it's just this bunch of like. It's just like this war within your mind of like fuck i've I've just said a bunch of bullshit to people and i and now they probably have a perception of me that I don't like uh which th there are days where I wish i I could like just leave the earth like I could just like pe like I could just wipe myself out of people's brains so I don't exist anymore mm. um but then people wouldn't hear your music yeah yeah uh like uh the what's the so it to kind of, what I kind of personally did to try and overcome that is to just kind of understand that sometimes the per, like you can have your friends that are very close to you, you know get your own group of people that ground you onto the earth. Uh, I've got my like group of eleven to ten friends that like help ground me. Even you're a part of it, you know. You're in my private server. No, I appreciate um, that. To be fair, because a lot of people uh, do the same with you. Yeah, that, that I talk to when I need grounding, when I need to, when I need someone to tell me, like, when I've done some fuck shit, you know, where I'm like, fuck, okay, this is a lapse in my judgment. Like, I need to talk to someone, and you, like, there, there are times where I'll call you, and you could fucking tell me, like, yo, that's not vessel of you, fam. Like, you can't, don't do that. Yeah, don't do yeah, that. Yeah. That's not what you would do. And you remind me of my own morals. You kind of say, that's, you know, you need to stick to what you're doing. Our minds wonder, man. Like, our yeah. minds wonder, and sometimes just having that positive, uh, output from someone else, um, it kind of sets you back into reality mode. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of uh, one of that that, long, if that you, route again, that railway. If you don't have anyone, sadly, the only thing you can really do in that situation is talk to yourself and treat yourself like how you would treat someone else. Yeah, yeah. You, you, all you can really do is like. The conversations I have with, 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 by example, with Mashi, um, where if I do some fuck shit, the only person that you could probably talk to is yourself and start telling yourself, like, okay, I've done some fuck shit. Do I really fuck with it or do I not? Like, the, is this something within my morals or is it not? You have to really, like, look deep within yourself and kind of talk to yourself and understand your own brain and genuinely, like, uh, a lot of people don't really like doing this. They want to stay away from their mind and, like, not explore it and, like, you know, do drugs and fucking run away from their problems uh, because, you know, panic attacks happen. I do understand that. Yeah, but, like, yeah. I, I really like just sitting there and exploring my own mind and really understanding why I do certain things I do and try to work on them and try to be a more positive impact on people and try my best to, like, you know, do the right thing and... um make sure that even though I have a mental illness and I do know that if in, uh, it affects people negatively sometimes, um, I, and I, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm glad that I have forgiving people around me that, um, that understand that I'm a person that's suffering and that sometimes I will make mistakes and I will do fuck shit that is wrong. Um, Everyone makes and they mistakes, can keep man. Me in Everyone's check. gonna do something wrong. Everyone's gonna do something wrong in life. Um, but um, yeah, if if you have that conversation with yourself, where you can sit there and reevaluate yourself and kind of like go, okay, I really didn't like what I just did. I'm gonna be honest with the person that I did it to. Tell them, hey, I'm sorry about what I did. Um, uh, I I think it's best to break things off, or maybe you know do something that like. Not you're not really searching for their forgiveness. You're just kind of searching for your own forgiveness. Because yeah. at the end of the day, they can forgive you, but if you don't forgive yourself, then you're still fucked. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, so uh, you kind of have to sit there and do something to forgive yourself, and kind of like sit there and do what makes it right for you. And of course, what makes it right for them, because if they're affected negatively, you want to make it right. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you had to give. Um, one last bit of advice uh, for the people listening 
uh, regarding I'd say regarding music people are just starting up wanting to go down the route of, because people people see music and when they start music they automatically see fame and I think it's the worst thing to do personally like I think you're going to have to want to do it because you want to do it not because you want to get a get rich scheme it's, it's mm -hmm. not that way at all but if you could just be that, real yeah I'd say what's the advice you give if you just just be real bro be real, be real with yourself be real with your intentions make sure that uh um just be yourself really do what you want to do uh even if it's not music if it's something else that you're really passionate about just really when it comes to things that you're passionate about the only thing you should uh, think about in those moments is yourself and how you feel about it uh so just um you know, do what makes you happy uh, and don't let what other people say kind of like bring it down. I know it's very generic advice, but genuinely think about it. Like you need to, if people start turning around and calling you a cornball or corny or fucking all that shit, don't listen to that shit, bro. It's it's such an annoying fucking word. Uh, I get it. Sometimes people can be cringe. At the end of the day, if you're enjoying yourself, you love what you're doing, then fucking ignore that shit strict on that, unless on, on, strict on that. unless you're a fucking like a weirdo or a pedo then yeah then you deserve <laughs> to get smacked the fuck up bro you deserve to get smacked the fuck up yeah but, you know <laughs> i didn't expect that one <laughs> weirdo <laughs> not the pedo part <laughs> episode one everyone um All thank right. you vessel for coming on man it means a lot no um, problem man uh, yeah, guys, everyone, go and check out Vessel. He's got, he's going to be all over the social media. Uh, I'm going to be. Uh, getting I drop divest. Use. Listen to that. Yeah, shit. definitely. I'm going <laughs> to put that up in the links. Uh, divest is definitely out now. Um, music video is out. Definitely go and check that on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud. Or have you yeah, away? no, yeah. no, I don't. I can't. You've bro, I haven't played. <laughs> I haven't paid for my SoundCloud Pro yet, <laughs> so I need to go do that. <laughs> yeah, right, everyone stay away from SoundCloud because Divest isn't on there. But um, you know, again, episode one, Lonely Globe. Thanks so much, Vessel. If you had to shout out some people out, because obviously you've had a lot of people um, help you out, specifically with music. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, loads yeah. Loads yeah, of yeah. people have come forward and want, like, have really helped you out. Uh, Infinity Ghost is definitely one of those, isn't he? Because yeah. he, he, yeah. It, Go, shouts, so, shouts out to Infinity Ghost, bro. He's the only artist in West Yorkshire that is really like, um, like, uh, that does what I do. Yeah. And uh, he's definitely helped out with a lot of my music, and I've helped him out. Um, I gotta give a big shout out to uh, North Face too, because he's produced a lot of my tracks in Twenty Two Five. He's also a really good producer that has really helped me solidify my sound and really like. Every song that I've made up to now is either produced by me, North Face, or Twenty Two Five. It's just all uh, all them three that's just been helping me solidify my sound. Um, and again, a big shout out to uh, Bad Lad too because literally he, he gave me like a big talk on like just how to really make yourself sound better. And you know, it gave me a lot of like like not lessons, but like just taught me a lot of things about mixing and how to make yourself sound better. Um, but yeah, no, like shout out to all those people that have uh, helped me solidify my sound and just, you know, and also kind of helped me become a, you know, a better person. And shout out to you too, Mashi, oh, because you've also man, been, you. you've been there for me <laughs> in my low best, points, man. you know. So best, it literally shouts out to every single one of you. I love every single goddamn one of you. And shout out to my fans, because you guys oh, are crazy. Big up on that, guys, because I will admit, like, shout out to Vessel's fans on that, because he, mm -hmm. he, like I said, you've got to hear from this podcast everyone has shit in life everyone's got like a background music comes forward and you know what hopefully it helps you guys out as much as vessel wants it to help you guys out so big shout out to you all on that i'll give that one as well. Yeah.